In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Black Flame Spellblade build, which is a level 100 version of the Black Flame Apostle build, and sort of advances that build. So if you've been wondering what to do with that build, then watch on to find out. The first thing I want to do is talk about the weapon to use for this build. I am using the Cross Naginata for this build, but there are several weapons you can use for this build, and I kind of want to run you through that real quick before we get into why I'm using this one. You can actually use the Flame Burge for this build, or you can use the Nagakiba for this build, or Uchi Katana, or the Scythe, or the Reaper Scythe. The reason for that is that all of these weapons allow you to use certain Ashes of War, and they all have bleed buildup on them. You can use really any weapon you like that use the Ashes of War, but I feel like having the bleed buildup on the weapons intrinsically or natively is very, very good for this build when coupled with Blood Flame Blade. Blood Flame Blade is simply less effective on weapons that don't have bleed on them, and if you make a weapon bleeding using an Ash of War, then you can't use the Ash of Wars we want to use, and also you won't be able to buff with Blood Flame Blade. So that's why finding weapons that have bleed on them that can also use the Ashes of War we want to use is crucial for this build. There are really four Ashes of War you can use for this build, and it's going to come down to personal taste. You have Repeating Thrusts, you have Spinning Slash, you have Double Slash, and you have Blade Dance. You could use any four of these that you want in combination with those weapons, as long as those weapons allow it. I'm not sure every single one of those weapons allows all four of these, but they should allow three of them in most cases. So selecting the weapon with which weapon art you want to use is kind of how you're going to go about building this from the beginning. The reason we want these Ashes of War is because they allow us to swing faster than we would normally with these weapons, allowing you to set bleeding in the case that you're using Blood Flame Blade, or allowing you to hit multiple times with Black Flame Blade if you're using that instead. The reason that I chose the Cross Naginata for my build, although I really like the Nagakiba as well, is because Repeating Thrust sets the bleed status effect faster than just about anything, and when used with Black Flame really gets that status effect on a target quickly over and over. And it also does so from very good range. Being able to start this windup of this ability early in a lot of cases as enemies or bosses move into you allows you to hit with the very tip of the spear, keeping you a good distance from bosses and out of harm's way. So when you roll backward after this animation, you're usually out of the way. If you did it with a shorter weapon like a rapier or something like that, you would get hit a lot more often. Additionally, Repeating Thrust costs 7 FP, which is substantially cheaper than Double Slash or Spinning Slash, so you're going to save a lot of FP using this, but again, it's kind of up to personal taste, and you can use whichever you like. I also happen to really like the moveset of this weapon. It's got a lot of pokes, and it has like an overhead slash with R1, which is great for flying enemies or trying to hit enemies that are like tall and lanky and sometimes have like a concave shape to them on their body like the gargoyles. You can hit them very easily with this R1. You're going to want the God Slayer seal for this build for the S scaling and for the additional damage to God Slayer incantations. These are the Black Flame ones that we're going to be using primarily. It doesn't buff all of the incantations you'll use for this build, but it will boost the Black Flame ones, which is good. For armor, it's not super important what you wear as long as you can medium roll. I'm using the Black Flame Monk set here just because I think it kind of fits the theme, but you can use whatever you'd like. When it comes to talismans for this build, I don't think there's an exact perfect setup. And that's because the way you play your Black Flame Spellblade is going to vary from person to person. Some people might use Black Flame a lot because it's very good with this build, and they'll melee only when they have to. Others will melee first and only use Black Flame when they need to. So depending on the situation, what you're facing, your talismans are going to kind of change, and I'm going to run you through what those might be. But what I generally use is the Winged Sword Insignia, Radigan Icon, Radigan Source Seal, and the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus one. The Winged Sword Insignia increases your damage as you hit enemies repeatedly. Uh, this is really good with repeating thrusts. You do one cast of this and you're buffed. You do two casts, I think you're like almost at max buff, which is really, really good. Very good in some situations. And Radigan Icon is there to speed up the casting of your spells, like Black Flame Blade and Black Flame, so that these go off faster. Really can't cast fast enough, so that's good. Uh, Radigan Source Seal is there to meet the requirements of the weapon and also give us some extra health and endurance for equip weight. And that's just fantastic. Anytime you have a strength dexterity weapon that has, you know, over about 15 strength or dexterity requirements, this is a really good choice. And finally, Dragon Crest Shield Talisman is there to kind of offset some of that extra damage that we take from Radagon's Source Seal. And just to make you just a little bit more tanky in general. Now, there are other talismans that you can swap in and out depending on what you're facing. For instance, Lord of Blood's Exultation increases your attack power by 20%. 
when someone near you has suffered blood loss for about 20 seconds or so. This is really good for fights that are prolonged where you know you're going to set bleeding early on or repeatedly, like a boss fight that's particularly susceptible to bleed. Um, I don't recommend having it on all the time because I feel like you kill enemies too quickly for this to happen regularly. But it's one that you certainly could use with this build, and you could swap it out with the Winged Sword Insignia, or you could swap it out with Dragon, Dragon Press Talisman. Either one of those, you could swap it out if you want. Fire Scorpion Charm is also not bad for this build. Blood Flame Blade, Black Flame, Black Flame Blade, and Scouring Black Flame all deal fire damage, so this would boost all of those. So this is also a really good choice. Keep in mind that it does lower your mitigations even lower, so if you're using this with Radagon Sword Seal, you're going to be really squishy. So I don't recommend using both of those together. Another good choice for this build is Ancestral Spirit's Horn. This gives you 3 FP back after defeating enemies. You go through lots of FP for this build, so this would not be a bad option for you. And lastly, Ritual Sword Talisman is also not a bad choice for this build, particularly if you find yourself using Black Flame more often, because it will boost your overall damage by 10% when your HP is at max, and this includes your spell's damage. So if you find yourself flinging Black Flame like regularly, then you'll probably want to swap this one. Just make sure you keep your health at full in order to take advantage of that buff. The spells I like to use for this build are Black Flame, Black Flame Blade, Scouring Black Flame, Blood Flame Blade, and Golden Vow. These are not the only spells you can use. For instance, you can add Blessing Spoon in here to give yourself a heal over time, or you could add Lightning Spear to have another ranged option of a different damage type. There are lots of other spells you can do here, but the focus should be around those four or five spells. Black Flame is simply an excellent ranged option with this build. It fires off pretty fast with the amount of dexterity and Radagon Icon that we have. And you can also charge it up for extra damage for like unaware targets or whatever if you have some extra time for slow enemies. And what's really great about it besides the fire damage is the fact that it does damage like over time a little bit based on the max HP of the target. So it's going to be more effective against more challenging targets because they typically have more HP. Which means it's more effective when you need it to be more effective. And if you're a person who likes to co-op, for instance, bosses usually have way more health in co-op, so it's only going to be more effective in co-op than it would be solo, so if you like co-oping, then this is a very good spell. Black Flame Blade does the same thing in terms of doing a damage over time effect to the target's HP being more effective depending on the max HP of the target. It's a little bit harder to use, though, because you have to buff yourself and then attack very quickly because it has a short duration. And the best times to do these are after a dodge roll or while you're sprinting. So you should get in the habit of sprinting and dodge rolling and then buffing and then attacking immediately afterward. It works really good with your weapon skill, whatever it is, too. You can buff and then use your weapon skill immediately to put on, like, a couple of hits of this really quickly. Black Flame Blade is simply not one of those things you're going to use all the time. It's just too much of a pain in the butt to go around and buff before every enemy you fight. And you can bleed a lot of enemies in this game. So you're generally going to use Blood Flame Blade while you're running around, you know, maps and legacy dungeons and dungeons, etc. Because bleeding is usually fine. And those, that buff lasts 60 seconds compared to like 5 or 6 seconds of Black Flame Blade. But what you want to use Black Flame Blade for, again, is in cooperative situations or in situations where bosses cannot bleed or they have very high bleed resistance. Or in situations where you cannot hit a boss repeatedly. Getting that little bit of Black Flame on them is better than, you know, hitting them with some bleed buildup, but you'll never be able to proc a bleed because the enemy is too aggressive or something like that. Scouring Black Flame is an addition over the Black Flame Apostle build, uh, and what's really good about this spell is the AoE. This build really lacks AoE, particularly if you're using the weapon I chose because it's a poking weapon most of the time. So you're going to give yourself an AoE option, and this thing can be charged up like Black Flame to deal further reach instead of extra damage like Black Flame. It's just going to go further. And it's really good on big targets, and it's really good on targets that have shields. Like, one of the downsides of this playing with this weapon type is enemies with shields really block you and you bounce off them. But this thing is really good at dealing with those enemies, because not only does it put the dot on them through their shield, but it still deals damage to them, and if they let go of block at all during that animation, really, they're going to take full damage from that spell, which is great. Blood Flame Blade, as I mentioned, is going to be sort of your go-to buff as you're running around the landscape. This puts a fire damage buff on your weapon. You can actually see it if you go to your equipment to see how much it's adding. You'll notice it under fire. But then it also enhances bleed buildup by making bleed buildup continue for a second or so after you hit a target. So a lot of times you'll notice with this buff up that you'll hit a target and like they'll bleed a second after you stop hitting them. That's because it's continuing to build up, and it really makes this build shine, and it's one of the reasons we want a bleed weapon to begin with, so that bleed is going off constantly. 
And lastly, we have Golden Vow, which is a 90 second buff that increases your overall damage by 15% and increases your damage mitigation as well. This applies to all your damage. So if you're casting spells while this is up, you're going to deal more. If you're attacking, it's going to deal more. Blood Flame will deal more. Black Flame will deal more. Everything's going to deal more when you have this up. So you want to keep it up when you're facing like, you know, you're going to, you see a bunch of enemies up ahead. You know, you're going to be fighting for a couple minutes. That's when you want to pop this. Maybe not when you're exploring exactly because it's pretty expensive. But you definitely want to keep Blood Flame Blade up like constantly. It's a lot cheaper. And if you don't know what's around the corner, you'll definitely want that. But you may not use Golden Vow unless you know you're going to be fighting a bunch of enemies. It's also great during boss fights. So my stats for this build are 30 Vigor, 30 Mind, 15 Endurance, 12 Strength, 30 Dexterity, 9 Intelligence, 43 Faith, and 10 Arcane. I actually took the Radagon Sword Seal off for this. People were asking about that because they were wondering why they couldn't hit the stats I was hitting in previous videos. So just keep in mind that the Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity will actually have 5 more points each than what they're showing there. But those are the stats right now. Vigor is pretty self-explanatory here. You need health. You're going to be in melee range. A lot of times when you're using these weapon arts that have long animations, you're going to trade some damage. So you need to survive those, and that's what you have a lot of Vigor for. 30 Mind is there because this is an absolutely FP-hungry build. You literally cannot get enough FP. In fact, I don't think I would want to try playing this with less than 30 Mind because Black Flame is 18 FP. Spinning Slash, if you're using that, is 14 FP. Uh, it's only 7 for Repeating Strikes, which is the reason I use it. Scouring Black Flame is expensive. These are very expensive spells, and you're going to want to be able to use them whenever you want. So having a high FP pool is very, very needed for this build. When it comes to Endurance, you just want enough to equip the armor set that you're wearing. 20 Endurance is usually enough to wear like a medium armor set and still mid-roll. Keep in mind I have Radagon Source Seal, that's why I'm saying 20. So that should be plenty there. Strength is just enough to be able to wield the weapon you're using. I have plus 5 from Radagon Source Seal, so that's 17. That's just enough. That's like 1 over what I need to use the Cross Naginata. This will vary slightly depending on the weapon that you chose. You may need a little bit more or a little bit less here, but that's just there for that. Dexterity is there for two reasons, to increase the damage we deal with weapons. We put Keen Scaling on all of the weapons that we pick. So whatever weapon you want, you're going to pick Keen Scaling. Most of these are Dexterity or leaning to the Dexterity side of things to begin with, so that's going to benefit them a lot. And also increases the speed at which you cast spells, so that's going to help you get your Black Flame Blade buff off faster. It's going to help you get Black Flame off faster, etc. And that's just great. You don't need Intelligence for this build, and Faith is there not only to meet the requirements for spells, but also to make your spells hit hard. If you're playing any sort of Spellblade build, you want your spells to be effective, so you need a good amount of faith here. And lastly, Arcane. You need 10 Arcade to use Blood Flame Blade, so you don't want any less than that. You don't really need any more here, because your weapon doesn't have Arcane Scaling, so it's not going to increase in Blood Buildup from Arcane like some weapons would if they had Arcane Scaling. So that pretty much wraps up the Black Flame Spellblade build. I hope you guys are enjoying this build. It can be a ton of fun to use. I feel like it has a lot of tools in its kit. And there are a lot of other spells that you can mess around with and add to it and just really enjoy it. I think next up I'm going to be doing an Archer build followed by probably the update finally to the Dragon Priest build or a pure Faith Caster build before we get to other builds. 